integration of rational functions. In order to integrate a rational function, we will try to reduce a function to a sum of simpler fractions. This process is called partial fraction decomposition. We do have a few cases of the partial fractions, and I will focus on case one. Case one, it will be a rational function with the polynomial from the denominator being a product of distinct linear factors. In other words, taking a polynomial from the denominator and trying to factor out, the result will be, each factor will be a lin linear factor, like this one, let's say, and none of them is the same. That means no factor is repeated and no factor is a constant multiple of another, distinct, unique. And then the rational function, we will rewrite as a partial fractions. Each factor will give me a denominator of the simpler fraction, and then I have to work it out of the numbers in the numerator. Usually we will put like A, B, C, D, let's say K, and so on. Depends on the degree, depends on the number of fractions. Exercise number one. Evaluate uh, integral of the rational function 5x minus 3 over quantity x plus 1 times x minus 3. Okay. In this case, it's one step is done because denominator is the second degree has the second degree polynomial, but we do have a product form. That means this is a proper rational function. Let's focus on partial fraction decomposition. We see two factors. This will give me two partial fraction. First one will have denominator x plus 1 and the second x minus 3. And I have to figure out a and b. We know that both of the functions, the original one and my first step, they have to be the same. It means we have no problem with the denominators because denominators look the same. I can actually rewrite 5x minus 3 and then x plus 1 and x minus 3. It's a, exactly the same like the function on the right hand side. Common denominator of this two partial fraction is the same, x plus 1 times x minus 3. We have to work it out the numerator and then we have a, the quantity a, it's multiplied by x minus 3 and then quantity b is multiplied by x plus 1 in order to get the common denominator x plus 1 times x minus 3. Now what we see, we see that denominators are matching. We have to do exactly the same for numerators. 5x minus 3 must be the same like a times x minus 3 plus b x plus 1. Using this equation, using just the numerators, we will find out a and b. Uh, we do have two different ways to find a and b, and I will focus in this exercise on the first one. What I need, I have to find a and b, and I will pick up the value for x. And let's say I will pick the value negative 1. And then I'm substituting negative 1 to this equation. 5 times negative 1 minus 3 equals to a negative 1 minus 3 plus b, negative 1, plus 1. Of course, that's my negative 1. Negative 1, negative 1. Uh, negative 5 and negative 3 is negative 8. Negative 1, negative 3 is negative 4a. And negative 1 plus 1 is 0. That means the coefficient, the b, is gone. And that's what I want. a is simply 2. Now I have to pick another value for x because I have second unknown. And let's pick 3. Let's substitute 3 to the equation. 5 times 3 minus 3. a times 3 minus 3 plus b 3 plus 1. And I can just make sure that we know what it is. 3, 3, and 3 instead of x. And let's work it out. 15 minus 3 is 12. Now 3 minus 3, the a coefficient is gone. 3 plus 1, 4, 4b. B is simply 3. 
That means we find out, we did calculate the coefficient a and b. Let's come back to the integral. The integral was uh, x plus 1 and x minus 3. The integral was rewrite as a partial fractions, and this was a and this was b. Let me that just double check. Hey, okay. And now we can see that's the simplest fraction. Integral of 2 over quantity x plus 1 is copy a 2 and the natural log of x plus 1 because derivative of x plus 1 is 1. If I will let u to be x plus 1, thinking about the u substitution, the u is the x. This means no problem. The same for this one. Copy 3 and then natural log of x minus 3 plus the constant. I can rewrite this. I can put the coefficient as an exponent, natural log x minus 3 cube, and multiply adding adding two logarithms i can multiply the inputs x plus one and i don't need a absolute value since it's squared times x minus three cube plus the constant c that means this is everything the logarithm that means when we adding we can multiply okay and let's see this is the final answer and I hope one of them is on the multiple choice option. Uh, it looks like the first one. Okay, exercise number two. Integral of the rational function, proper rational function, because degree on the top is one, degree in the denominator is two. Five x plus one over two x squared minus x minus one. It's a rational function. We always start with factoring out denominator. I see quadratic function. That means I'm expecting two factors. 2x squared, 2x and x. This number, the constant is 1. That means I will put 1 and 1. And for now, I will put two negatives. But I think I, if I multiply 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. And if I will multiply this, it's negative x negative 2x and negative x will give me 3 and i don't have that 3 then i have to make it plus okay i will remove this now it's negative 2x plus x that works okay i see two linear factors and this will result in two partial fraction dx a and b let's work it out on coefficient a and b 5x plus 1, that's my numerator, will be exactly the same like the numerator of the last step. a, we, we will multiply by x minus 1, and b, we will multiply by 2x plus 1. Let's pick the value for x. The first one will be negative half. Negative half times 5, negative 5 halves plus 1. a, negative half minus 1. And then b, 2 times negative half plus 1. Uh, negative 5 over 2 plus 1 is negative 3 over 2. Negative half and negative 1 is negative 3 over 2a. And then um, that's gone. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. That means this is 0. Okay, we don't need anything. Now, if I will divide both sides by negative 3 halves, a, I need the red color, a is simply 1. Okay, now let's pick different value for x, possibly 1, a little bit easier. 5 times 1 plus 1, and then a, 1 minus 1, and b, 2 times 1 plus 1. 6 on this side. 1 minus 1 is gone. 0. And 2 times 1, 2 plus 1, 3, b. b is 2. Okay. We did compute nicely a coefficient a and b. Let's come back to the partial fraction. The partial fraction were 2x 
plus 1 and x minus 1. This was a, which is just 1, and this is b. And now what we have, definitely this one, this part is a little bit easier than this one. Integral of 2 over x minus 1, it's copy 2 and natural log of the denominator because derivative of the denominator is 1. But this one, we have a coefficient 2. As we can quickly apply u substitution, if 2x is 1, then du is 2 dx. 1 half du is dx. We do have extra, extra coefficient. That means this integral will become 1 half 1 over u du. And integral of 1 over u, of course, is ln natural log of u. But we can see this extra coefficient. This means having a coefficient 2 of the x of the linear function, we will end up with 1 half in front. But we can see where this comes from. I can rewrite this using the red color. This means we do have 1 half natural log of u, but u was 2x plus 1. And plus 2 natural log of x minus 1. This is not multiple choice, but let's try to rewrite. A natural log of 2x plus 1 and I can put half as an exponent and of course 2 I can put as an exponent. Okay, we can see 1 half travels here, 2 travels here. And now we do have ln and I can write, let me put absolute value, 2x plus 1 and then I can ignore the, abs the absolute value because it's squared. And one more step, since we adding, we can rewrite as a one logarithm of a square root of 2x plus 1 times x minus 1 squared. And let's hug everything. Okay, that's the final answer. Just in case if instead of addition, you will see products, but not product of two logarithms, just the product of the arguments, the input. Exercise number three. Now we have definite integral from zero to one, and the rational function is two over two x squared plus three x plus one. Okay, again, proper rational function, degree of the denominator greater. Let's try to factor out denominator because we have to find out what partial fraction we will have. Uh, again, 2x and x and 1. And now we have 3x. That means I will add and add. 2x plus x. Oh, too much. Okay. I see nicely my 2x plus 1 and x plus 1 as a partial fraction from 0 to 1. I have to work it out quantity A and quantity B. Let's see. We know that the denominators are the same. Then we will work on the numerators. 2 must be the same like a times x plus 1. As we can see I'm multiplying this by this and this by this. I can erase them. And b I will multiply by 2x plus 1. Okay. And the same procedure. Let's pick up a value for x. First one I will pick negative half. Let's see what's happened. On the left-hand side, I have only 2. That means I will copy 2. And then a, I will substitute instead of x, negative half plus 1. And b, 2 times negative half, I can put negative in front, plus 1. Of course, negative half times 2 is negative 1 plus 1. This will give me 0. And this is 2. And negative half plus 1 is half a. I will multiply both sides by 2. 4. x a is 4. Now, the second value, I will pick negative 1. And what we have, we still have 2 on the left-hand side. a, negative 1 plus 1, plus b, 
2 times negative 1 plus 1. We can see right away negative 1 plus 1 is 0. We have 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, b. b is negative 1. Okay? We did compute a and b. Let's divide this page. One more comment. You're probably thinking why I am picking these numbers. Or you may realize that always these numbers are the zeros of the denominator. Because we can see if I will put for x negative 1, I have 0. If I will put instead of x negative half, I will have 0 for the second factor. Okay? That means always is nice and easy process if we will pick for x the zeros. Theoretically, we can put any number. We will have just extra steps, but always focus for on zeros first. Uh, okay, let's integrate. We have a, which is 4, over 2x plus 1. And then I can put b, which is negative 1, over x plus 1. Okay. Now, hopefully, we can integrate smoothly. Uh, 4 is a constant. And having 2x, having 2x in the... Uh, denominator, we know that we will end up with extra coefficient half. That was done in the previous problem. That means one half natural log of the denominator because we will divide by the derivative of 2x plus 1. And then negative 1 and natural log of x plus 1. x plus 1 doesn't have a coefficient of x. And oh, it's not a plus constant. C. we do have a limit of integration from 0 to 1. Let's find exact value. 4 times half is 2, natural log, and let's substitute 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1, minus 1 plus 1. Minus 2, natural log of 0 plus 1, which is 1, and then 0 plus 1, it's 1. Okay. 2, natural log of 3 minus natural log of 2. And ln of 1 is 0, which this will give me 0. Okay. Uh, I can rewrite as a ln of 3 squared minus ln of 2, ln of 9 minus ln of 2. And since I am uh, subtracting, I can divide 9 over 2. Please remember, subtraction is giving me division. Well, we can leave it like that, or we can put 4.5 if we like. But I think this will be the final answer. And we, don't, we didn't have an option. Okay, make sure that you know the whole process. Okay, uh, exercise number four. Integral. Of the rational function from 0 to 1, a definite integral, x minus 4 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. Proper rational function, let's factor out denominator. Okay, we do have x and x, and 6 will give me the factors of 6 are 2 and 3, and negative 2 and negative 3 will give me negative 5. Two partial fraction, x minus 2 is the first denominator x minus 3 is the second denominator. Of course, from 0 to 1. Quantity A, quantity B. Numerator x minus 4 must be the same like numerator on the right-hand side. A times x minus 3, B times x minus 2. Um, okay, let's pick the value for x. And you know the trick, I will pick 2 and 3. Substituting 2, we do have 2 minus 4, a, 2 minus 3, plus b, 2 minus 2. That's the point. One of them should be 0. Negative 2, negative 1, a. a is 2. Now, let's take 3. And let's substitute. 
Of course, I'm substituting using this equation. 3 minus 4, a, 3 minus 3, plus b, 3 minus 2. Negative 1 and 3 minus 3 is 0. 3 minus 2, of course, is 1, b. b is negative 1. We did compute A and B. Now let's integrate. I can possibly, okay, I can say from 0 to 1, the first fraction was A, which is 2 over X minus 2. And the second partial fraction was x minus 3 and the quantity b, negative 1. I can put negative like that, negative 1. Okay. Now we can see we have one single x, one single x, no extra coefficient. That means constant 2, natural log of x minus 2 minus natural log of x minus 3 from 0 to 1. Let's apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, substituting upper limit and then the lower limit. 2 times natural log 1 minus 2 minus natural log 1 minus 3. Absolute value, of course. Minus 2 natural log of 0 minus 2 natural log of 0 minus 3. Okay, 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1, it's 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. And then, let me keep this. Um, natural log, uh, I mean 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. And the same negative 3, absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. Natural log of 1 is 0. That means we are okay with this one. And then we do have negative ln of 2, negative 2 ln of 2, and negative and negative, positive ln of 3. 1 negative ln of 2, and ne 2 negatives ln of 2, negative 3 ln of 2, plus ln of 3. I can possibly switch the order ln of 3 minus 3 ln of 2. When we have two quantities, one negative, one positive, it's really nice to put the negative as a second. It creates less. It will be less confused. You will be not confused. Okay. And let's combine ln of 3 minus ln of 2 and the coefficient 3 will become exponent. Natural log of 3 minus natural log 2 cubed is 8. Since we're subtracting, we can divide 3 over 8. Subtracting means division. This is nice final answer. And I have one more. Exercise number 5. Integral of the rational function x plus 5 over x plus 1. Okay, that's me this one. It's not a proper rational function because the degree of the denominator, the polynomial from the denominator and numerator is the same. If it's the same, it's improper. And we can definitely try to use the long division. We can divide, but I would like to show you one trick. Let's rewrite this. I do have x plus one and I will create x plus one plus 4. That means I will rewrite, rewrite quantity 5 as a 1 plus 4. You probably know why I picked 1, because I have, I wanted to match my denominator. That means now I will rewrite as a x plus 1 and plus 4, and both of them has the same denominator. That means this is not really partial fraction decomposition, because denominator was already simple. We can't factor out further a lin linear term x plus 1. Okay, but let's see what I did. I did split for two fractions. x plus 1 over x plus 1 is 1. And this will stay 4 over x plus 1. 
integral of 1 dx is x, integral of 4 over x plus 1 is 4 natural log of x plus 1, plus the constant c. Let me please remember about that nice trick. Okay. Thank you very much.